From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Randall McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. Summer, 1873, the road between Brackettville and Fort Clark. Though Colonel Mackenzie's 4th Cavalry had brought peace to much of this area, there were still men dedicated to restoring the frontier to violence. One such man was an American expatriate known by the Spanish name El Halcón, the Hawk. Beyond being a plunderer, Halcón was driven by the need for a special kind of revenge. Each man in the uniform of the 4th Cavalry was his enemy, his deadly enemy, to be destroyed without mercy or cause. Let's leave these two be, Halkin. We've got a lot of other things to take care of today. They're soldiers, aren't they? And I say what we do. Cut them off. Go ahead. Every soldier he can get his hands on is dead. Six in less than a month. What's he trying to do? He can't kill off the whole regiment. He's got enough hatred in him to try. He was in the army once himself. Halkin? Long time ago, long before he called himself Halkin. He and the army didn't get along very well. He was playing Corporal Charles Barron then. Now he's trying to get even. I wonder who with? Me. I court-martialed him. Sergeant Wells. Yes, sir. Cut those men down. Then we're going back to Fort Clark. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, please organize a grave detail. Then have the sergeant dismiss the men. Yes, sir. Sergeant Wells, I want to see him as soon as he comes in. Come in. Shall I make out an incident report, sir? No, oh, Sergeant, I'll do it. Oh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. How are the men taking it? I mean, about... Smith and Peterson being... Well, they're kind of jumpy, sir. I don't think there'll be any complaints about passes being canceled. I heard one of the troopers say this morning that he wished the colonel would cancel all passes so he wouldn't be tempted to go to town and end up getting himself killed. We gotta stop this, Sergeant. I don't want any of my men going over the hill just because of some revenge-hungry ex-soldier. Oh. Halkin was in Brackettville last night, sir. 
We keep learning these things too late to do us any good. What brought him to Brackettville? Oh, he got after some new people in town. He would have killed them if the neighbors hadn't come out with guns. He's never gone after civilians before. Well, he did last night. All right. All right, Sergeant, let's go. Where to, sir? Brackettville. I want to know why Halkin picked on these particular civilians. Come on. I'm Jack Taylor. Oh, how do you do? Colonel McKenzie, this is Sergeant Wells. Hi, howdy. Sir. Uh, boy tells me you want to talk about what happened last night. Yes, I'd like to talk to you and to your wife. Well, uh, she'll be right out. She's been resting all day. Uh, sit down, gentlemen, please. Thank you. Sergeant. <clears throat> well, I understand you and your wife are newcomers to Brackettville. Yes, sir. We moved here from San Antonio about a week ago. I'm uh, opening a new store. I own one in San Antonio and one in Austin. Sound like a prosperous man, Mr. Taylor. I'm a fortunate man, Colonel. John, uh, John, would you mind stepping outside while your mother and I talk with these gentlemen? Why? John, please do as your father says, dear. Mary, uh, this is Colonel McKenzie and uh, Sergeant Wells. Uh, Sergeant Wells. How do you do? What can we do for you, Colonel McKenzie? Well, Mrs. Taylor, I... I understand that uh, you people were attacked last night by one Charles Barron. It's the first time I've known him to attack civilians. He robs them, yes, but this is the first time I've known him to attack them. I wondered if there was some particular reason why. I, uh, Colonel McKenzie, I'm afraid I couldn't say why this man... We may as well tell it, Jack. We're going to need protection, Colonel McKenzie. I just married Mr. Taylor a year ago. I was married before. To Charles Barron. John is his son. Barron's decided he wants the boy back. He lost track of us, you see. I left Charles over six years ago, but then we came here and he, he found us again. Last night he came for the boy. If, if John hadn't been staying the night with a friend, I'd, I'd have lost my son. And we wouldn't tell him where he could find the boy. Well, you can see what he did. He'd have killed us if some of our neighbors hadn't helped us. He hates us, Colonel McKenzie, and he's a man of deep hates. I wouldn't go with him, you see. Six years ago, when he broke out of prison and went to live across the border, I wouldn't go with him. I wouldn't do it. And last night's the first time you've seen him since then? The first time. But it won't be the last, I'm sure of that. He'll be back for the boy. He said so. And he won't stop at anything to get what he wants, I can tell you that. Yes, I, uh, I know Charles Barron, Mrs. Taylor. I know the kind of man he is. We've decided the best thing for us to do is leave this town on the next stage. I'll send someone else to open the new store. But, but between now and then, we need protection. Or he'll take my boy across the Rio Grande and I'll never see him again. He'll turn John into an outlaw just like he is himself. Will you help us, Colonel McKenzie? Mrs. Taylor, perhaps we can help each other. Now, I can't put a guard on this house around the clock. In the first place, I haven't manpower enough for that. And in the second place, even if I did, it would probably only serve to keep Baron away. However, I do think it would be a good idea if you and Mr. Taylor and your son would come to the fort. To stay? No, just until the next stage. Just until this Charles Baron, this Halkin, as he likes to call himself, makes his next move. Well, I, I can't think of a safer place. Mrs. Taylor, if you'll just get some things together, we'll drive you out to the fort right now. I'll be as quick as I can. Excuse me. Well, this is very kind of you, Colonel. I'm hoping we'll both profit from this, Mr. Taylor. We'll be with you directly. Mary! last night. Mary! If we keep hanging around here, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Set fire to it.
Who are you? What do you want? I want to know where the tailors are. Well, I... I don't know. I... Now, do you want me to have to ask your wife and kids? They don't know. Where are the tailors? Come and tell me. The fort. They went out to Fort Clark. Some soldiers were here. I ought to kill you. I'm trying to get that gun. son comes back here, you give him that knife, and you tell him I'm waiting for him, and you tell his mother that if she's smart, she'll send him to me, and I won't have to come back. I told you to burn them. How can it's crazy? The whole town's gonna be down on us for this. Hi, John. How you doing? You're a little shy, aren't you? I haven't seen you talking to anybody. I'm not shy. You know, I have a boy. Of course, he's not as big as you. He's back in New Orleans with my wife. And I tell you, I miss him. Keep away from me. I hate soldiers. Papa hates him, and so do I. Just because he does something, there's no reason you have to. You ought to take after your new pa instead of after... He ain't my pa. Jack Taylor ain't my pa. I'm Charles Barron's son. And he's coming to get me. And no soldiers can stop him. Because he's smarter and braver than any soldier. He's a murderer and a thief, John. And you're scared of him. You're scared he's going to kill you. Well, he is. He's coming to get me so I can join him. And he's going to kill all of you. <laughs> The Taylor family was now under the protection of the fort. But there was one thing Mackenzie hadn't planned on. One thing that made the big difference when Hal Cohn made his move. And that was the attitude of John Barron, the boy supposedly seeking protection at Fort Clark. In this connection, Colonel Mackenzie was destined to regret his hope that L. Hal Cohn would take action.
found him, sir. And I said I hoped Halcon would make a move. Take charge, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Ask the tailors to come to my office. Yes, sir. Colonel McKenzie, you've got to do something. Mr. Taylor, one of my men is lying out there dead right at this moment. He's not the first man of mine that Halcon has killed. I know I've got to do something. I'm sorry, Mrs. Taylor. Now, perhaps you can help us. Perhaps you can tell me as simply as you can and as calmly as you can, just what happened. When did you first miss your son? Not until Sergeant Wells woke us up. They'd found that soldier out there and they knew Charles had been here. John didn't come in with Jack and me when we went to bed last night. He stayed outside. I guess he never did come in because his bed wasn't even slept in. Kidnapped. Right here in an army fort. Mr. Taylor. My man is dead because he wasn't alert. But the boy is gone because he wanted to go with his father. That's hardly kidnapping. I didn't see any reason to tell you that he admired his father that much. I didn't think it would matter. No, of course not. Mr. We tried to teach John better, but we got so we never talked about it because it hurt Jack so much. I know. The boy thought his father was some kind of a hero. All right, Mrs. Taylor. I'll get your boy back. And at the same time, I'll get Halcon. Nineteen men volunteered, sir. I chose these. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, men. At ease. Oh, uh, this is Senor Torres. Tonight, men, we go after Halkin. All right, gather around. I've had Senor Torres scout the other side of the river for us. He tells me that Halkon's camp is just about here. He also tells me he's got eight men with him in camp. That means we'll be somewhat outnumbered. However, we have surprise on our side, and we have an organized plan. Now, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. We'll cross the river just about. Mackenzie and his raiders proceeded to a point about a mile above Halcone's camp. Once in position, the raiders made preparations to infiltrate the camp. Having located the hideout at the top of a ravine, Mackenzie and his men made their approach. The plan was simple. Remove the perimeter guard, then strike for Halcon himself.
soldiers! Let's get out of here. Ride with me. Cover me. All right, get up. Go ahead. Kill me. Not a chance. You're going back where you were six years ago. All right, on your feet. left me. John's a good boy, Mrs. Taylor. I think everything's going to be all right now. Oh, I know it will, Colonel. And someday, John will know it, too. John. John, the man who kills and then runs away isn't a brave man. The brave man is the man who fights when he has to and fights to the end. Like, like those soldiers did for you last night. Uh, Lieutenant, take charge of the prisoner and, and dismiss. Yes, sir. Sergeant Wells. Tell the men that passes are available again as of now. Yes, sir. Kenzie's Raiders rode again and again, carrying out the secret orders of the President of the United States. Do whatever necessary to clean up the Southwest. Make it a decent place for people to live. Ride with Mackenzie's Raiders as they relive the blazing pages of history in the making.
From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Ronald McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. March 13, 1874, Mexico, sanctuary for those who would destroy and run. A sanctuary protected by endless miles of trackless waste. Protected, too, by the laws of decent men which held a country's border inviolable. Well, something's wrong. He's not getting us. Try him again. For weeks, Colonel McKenzie had sought the stronghold of the Brothers. It had been found buried deep in the Palos Negros range. Wait a minute. See that Suara cactus up there? He's above it and to the right. Sight him in. I got him, sir. There he is. He's got us. They were three desperate, driven men, known only as the Brothers. No other name was necessary. In the border region, this name came to mean terror. To all but one man, Colonel Ronald Slidell McKenzie. Brothers returned last night to Gonzales' cabin. No fresh horses there. They can't move for two days. Two days. At last. All right, Sergeant. Acknowledge the word count and tell Tower the Raiders will rendezvous with him at Carbon Canyon an hour before sunset. Sir. Yes, Lieutenant. I was just going to send for you. There's Tower's report. You waited a long time for this. Uh, you bet I have. How are you going to get them to come out? I'm not. I'm going in after them. The Palos Negros Range? That's Chiricahua country. That's right, Lieutenant. Nobody but the brothers would dare hole up in such, such murderous country. Nevertheless, we've got to chance it. Now, we're going to move immediately. Alert the raiders. Full gear. Check with Jackson. If his hand's well enough, I want him with us. Yes, sir. Oh, Colonel, there's a Horace Winship outside to see you. Horace Winship. So he finally got here, huh? Why the devil couldn't he stay in Washington where he belongs? Sir? Horace Winship is a reporter with the Washington Tribune. He's a troublemaker. His two main targets are the Rio Grande area and the military mind, as he chooses to call it. He's sure the two of them in combination are going to get us into a war with Mexico. Shall I still post the raider, sir? Yes, immediately. I'll have to take care of Mr. Winship. Send him in, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Good of you to see me, Colonel McKenzie. My pleasure, Mr. Winship. Won't you sit down, sir? Thank you. Well, how can I be of service, sir? You can tell me how I can find a bath in this godforsaken country. <laughs> Forgive me, Colonel, but the so-called road I've been traveling is the closest thing to a dust storm I know of. Yes. Dust in the summer and mud in the winter. But you did get here and all in one piece. That's the important thing. 
Two years ago, Mr. Winship, that wouldn't have been possible. Uh, what brings you here, sir? Shall we say local color, Colonel? My readers have an intense interest in this part of the country. Now, surely you haven't traveled 2,000 miles for local color. Perhaps. Tell me, Colonel, how are conditions in this area? You know, I'd appreciate it if you'd speak plainly what's on your mind. Sir? You are this Horace Winship, are you not? The papers get to Fort Clark late, but they do get here. You seem to have made up your mind already about this area. All right, Colonel. I've been attending hearings of the Border Commission in Washington. I have reason to believe that the situation is becoming critical down here. I'd like to talk to you about the border. The border, Mr. Winship, is 18 miles from here, due southwest. Well, that's very valuable information. I would imagine that proximity uh, complicates the job you're trying to do here. That's right. Uh, in effect, the border has your hands tied, correct, Colonel? Correct, Mr. Winship. In view of your problem of maintaining peace and order, wouldn't you say not, not being allowed to cross the Rio Grande was a stupid formality, but the end might justify the means? The decision whether or not to cross the Rio Grande is not mine to make, sir. <laughs> I understand, Colonel, that you have something of a reputation for cutting through official red tape. Now, let me tell you this, Mr. Winship. There's an undeclared war being waged down here. It's being waged against innocent civilians and settlers in this miserable pocket. Fortunately, this is the last place on Earth where such a war can be waged. It's my job to keep it in check. Now, you're a journalist. Admittedly, the pen is mightier than the sword. But heaven help the poor devil who has only that thought for his dying moments. That was well enough said to be quoted. And now, Colonel, if I could prevail upon you to be put up here at the fort for a day or two, I trust this request won't uh, strain your hospitality, since there's no alternative, no other place for me to stay. Certainly, sir. Delighted to have you stay here as long as it's convenient. Now, if you'll forgive me, sir, I have some pressing business to attend to. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Please arrange quarters for Mr. Winship. He'll be staying with us for a few days. Thank you. Colonel, uh, do you mind if I uh, wander around a bit? I might yet find some local color that's worth writing about. Not at all, Mr. Winship, not at all. <laughs> Thank you. Lieutenant, as long as we're going to be busy tonight, make arrangements for Mr. Winship to have his dinner with the mess. Yes, sir. Sir, the only quarters available for Mr. Winship will be in the barracks. You'll have to do. Oh, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Be careful of him. He can be dangerous. Yes, sir. Didn't see you. What's that for? Uh, it's nothing. My name's Winship. I'm a reporter here to do a story. I was wondering who I could talk to about the post. Maybe you can spare me a little time. Might get your name in the paper. Sorry, I'm on duty, sir. What kind of duty calls for these? Sorry, sir. I have to go. chance to get the brothers. The risk involved? A chance to run into Chiricahua. Have you ever heard of anyone, sir, that took on the Chiricahua in their own country? No, Sergeant, I haven't. Nobody, that is, who lived to tell about it. So I'll understand if any of you wants to withdraw. Thank you, men. All right, we're all set. We'll pick up Corporal Tower and Carbon Canyon. Oh, and Jackson. Pack a bow and some of those Chiricahua arrows you've been saving. They might come in handy. Yes, sir. 
We'll leave the fort at five minute intervals. We'll rendezvous just beyond the ridge. Any final questions? All right. Good luck and dismissed. How about Mr. Winship? You all settled in comfortably for the night? Yes, sir. Let's hope he remains that way. Secret orders commanded this mission. Orders to clean up the Southwest. For each man, it was an assignment beyond the call of duty. The brothers had to be taken, and the risks had to be shared. But the mission had to remain absolutely secret. Tell you to get up there and keep a lookout, you get. Well, I found that soldier fella first, and I want some of the fun. You get yours soon enough, now good. you for the last time, soldier. When's Mackenzie coming? Hmm? No? No? When is he coming? Hmm? Are you gonna talk? Because if you ain't, you ain't never gonna walk again. Yes, I've been aware of it for some time. I suspect it's our friend Winship from Washington. Well, we're about to lose him. I just hope he doesn't get in any trouble. Hope he doesn't get in trouble? We're in Mexico, Lieutenant. We're already in trouble. No sign of tower anywhere, sir. Did tower acknowledge our message? Yes, sir, he did. Rendezvous one hour before sunset. Well, probably about two hours till sunset. We'll wait an hour. Then we've got to leave. We've got to get to the brother's shack before dusk. All right, dismount. my way. Yeah, that's pretty easy to do in these here parts. Now, you move out toward that shack over there, and you're going to find out just how lost you are. Go on, move. How long's it been now, Lieutenant? An hour and five minutes, sir. Something's happened to him. 
Mount up. Mount up. Coming. Huh? There's a lot of punishment still left on that. Are you gonna talk, boy? Or else your feet are gonna be feeling mighty poorly. Huh? You sure? Stop it! Stop it! What? What kind of miserable animal are you, anyway? I heard there were men like you running loose in this territory, but I couldn't believe it. Who's an animal? I'll tell you who's an animal. Hey, Len, on time. All right, Mr. Newspaper Man, you don't like the way we're doing things around here. Well, maybe you can do them better, so here, it's your turn to be an animal. See how it feels. You want me to... You want me to use this on him? I'll tell you, I know where Mackenzie is. Only, don't hit him again. The shack should be just up ahead. around here somewhere. Maybe a scouting party. Or maybe they're waiting for someone to come out of that shack. We've got to find them. Sergeant, you and Ryan take cover up close to those ponies. If we flush them out, they may try and run for it. But no shooting, remember? Lieutenant, you take the flank. Jackson, you come with me. Yeah. 
Well, unsaddle the horses and be quick about it. All right, check the canteen. What about them? Mackenzie will find them after we finish with them. in that house with your brothers. Sergeant. No, then. I said, who's in that house with your brothers? One of your soldiers and a reporter fellow. Are they alive? Get me his clothes. I've got to get in there. But, sir. There's no other way, Lieutenant. They've got two hostages in there. He says they're still alive. I've got to get into that house. <laughs> Quiet those horses. <laughs> Jackson, I'm going to make a run for the house. Pour as many arrows through those windows and through that door as you can to cover me. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. In the meantime, have the rest of the men sound off as loud as they can. Make them think old Yellow Knife himself is out here. Yes, sir. our local color sometimes becomes a bit violent. Shall we go back to the United States? Thank you, Tower. Thank you, sir. Come on. We'll get you back to Fort Clark. Yes, sir. said the tower's all right and we'll be able to walk in a couple of weeks, sir. All right. Tell him he's got a two weeks furlough coming as well as the new stripe he's sporting. That ought to make him feel better. Yes, sir. Oh, and Colonel, Mr. Winship would like to see you. All right. Send him in. Mr. Winship, I trust you're feeling well this morning? Better. Alive. I'm catching the noon stage east for Washington. Would you do me one last favor and send this out by the nearest Army Telegraph to my paper? Yes, sir, I'll see to it. I think you'll agree that this is a story for all America to read. Why don't you read it? Must I? Through the efforts of the United States 4th Cavalry, Colonel Ronald McKenzie commanding, the border country of southwest Texas has be... The border country of southwest Texas is becoming a fit place for Americans to live. If Colonel McKenzie can do this and still maintain the integrity of the Mexican border. It's a tribute to his courage as a soldier, his wisdom as a statesman, and above all, his profound concern with the lives of his fellow countrymen. Mr. Winship, needless to say, I... Mackenzie's Raiders rode again and again, carrying out the secret orders of the President of the United States. Do whatever necessary to clean up the Southwest. Make it a decent place for people to live. 
Ride with Mackenzie's Raiders as they relive the blazing pages of history in the making. From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Ronald McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led, McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States, clean up the Southwest, make it a fit place for Americans to live, wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. Southwest Texas, 1874, land of great future promise. Thousands upon thousands of acres which held the answer to the country's growing cattle needs. But the frontier was wild and lawless. To protect settlers and ranchers against murderous raids by renegade marauders, constant patrols of the 4th United States Cavalry stationed at Fort Clark. In command, Colonel Randall McKenzie, with secret orders from Washington to make the area safe to ensure the peace so that the promised cattle industry might one day become a reality. Now in late September 1874, Mackenzie was to face a new and different kind of lawlessness. Here, dump this in Barton's water hole and get away fast. And remember, no shooting. Sure, Mr. Corby. We'll be real careful. Couple of Bartons, man. Take cover. Morning, gents. Hope you don't mind us watering our horses. Not if that's all you're doing. What's in that sack? Bring them on their horses and dump them in a gully where nobody will find them. After all, Mr. Corby said, no shooting. After months of tension, the outbreak of a ruthless and destructive range war. Let's be as expeditious as possible, Mr. Bedlow. I'm not used to holding still this long. Not even for Leslie's Illustrated Weekly. sister back in New York, I wouldn't have to go through this at all. Well, our readers will appreciate it as much as she will, sir. They'd be disappointed if I took pictures of the famous 4th Cavalry without its colonel. Oh, come on, Mr. Bedlow. You know you're out here to make pictures of cattle, not some godforsaken army post nobody ever heard of. Ooh, a lot of people have heard of Colonel McKenzie and the grand job you've done out here. Real still now. 
Come in. Yes, Sergeant. Mr. Barton's waiting outside, sir. Says it's urgent. Uh, can I move now? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Barton's just the man you came to see. It's any man. Colonel McKenzie. Am I intruding? Oh, not at all. Uh, Mr. Bedlow? Uh, Mr. Barton, this is Lee Bedlow of Leslie's Weekly in New York. How do you do, sir? How do you do? He was just inquiring the way to your ranch. Now you can take him there yourself. My ranch? Yes, sir. I've been assigned to do a pictorial feature on your new cattle. I didn't know the folks back east were interested. No, nah, they should be. They're still feeling the effects of the financial panic last year. Factories closed, men out of work. If your shorthorns can put cheaper meat on their tables... Not only cheaper, but better. Longhorns are nothing but bone gristle. Shorthorns are fat and chunky. They cost less to feed and they're easier to raise. Well, that's why I'm here, sir. To photograph your herds and to show that contrast. Well, that's splendid, splendid. But I don't think you'd be safe on my land. I don't think anybody would be safe there. More trouble, Mr. Barton? Well, there haven't been any more raids. Nobody's tried to stampede my herd, but... Raids and stampedes? Well, this is more of a story than I expected. I thought rustling had been stamped out in this territory. Uh, yes, we try to keep it down, Mr. Bedlow. What were you saying? Two of my men are missing. That's what I came here to tell you. You mean they, they quit? I think Corby killed them, or had them killed. What? What else am I to think? Those men were loyal. They believed in what I'm doing. Now they're gone without a word. Didn't even collect their wages. I had them guarding my water hole. I'd gone without a trace of them. Pack your cart, Mr. Bedlow. We'll ride over to that water hole with you. Maybe we'll find a trace. Well, there's not much chance. Some of my steers were watering there when I rode by. I think they trampled out any signs we might have found. Yeah, Mr. Bedlow. Did you ever see a more beautiful sight than those short horns of mine? Yes, I can see why you're proud of them. Would you mind if I stayed here and took some pictures instead of riding on with you? Why don't you do that, Mr. Bedlow? The waterhole area is a little rough for a wagon anyway. We'll pick you up here on our way back. Kenzie Barton got with him. I don't like it. Probably somebody to complain to when he finds out what happened. What a good it'll do him. He'll have a bigger complaint when his shorthorns start licking his poison rock salt. Are you sure you didn't leave anything near that water hole that'll point my way? Not a thing, Mr. Corby. You got nothing to worry about. Good. Let's get out of here. This one isn't. But it's past saving. No. My animal, my job. Well, it's more of Corby's work. He's doing everything he can to break me. 
stampeding my herd, raids my ranch, and now he's poisoning my cattle. I think I'll go have a talk with Mr. Corby right now. What good will it do you? You have no evidence. You can't prove that he did this. You can't even accuse him. He'd laugh right in your face. Yeah, I expect he will. But you give a guilty man a chance to talk long enough, and sometimes he makes a slip. Maybe we can even help him to make a slip. And if he does? Well, if he does, it won't be legal evidence, but at least we'll be surer than we are now. Uh, I'll go with you for the showdown. Mr. Barton, I said a talk, not a showdown. Oh, and just to be sure. Oh, now, wait a minute. He's too fast on the draw. You'd be dead before you could pull this thing out. Coming, Mr. Barton? Mr. Bedlow? Ah, uh, Colonel McKenzie. I have something to show you. I'm sorry, Mr. Bedlow. We haven't time to look at pictures of cattle right now. These aren't cattle, sir. They're dead men. What? They look like they've been shot. Those are your men, Mr. Barton? Yes, it looks like them. Where'd you take this? Right down there. Those are my men, all right. Now we know what happened to them and why. Corby killed them so he could poison my water hole. It occurs to me they were killed somewhere else and then dumped in that arroyo. Mr. Bedlow, you may be able to help us. Gladly, Colonel. I think he's helped already. This proves Corby killed my men. No. It proves they're dead. It doesn't prove that Corby killed them. We've got to get more evidence. And maybe there's a way of getting Mr. Corby himself to provide that evidence. Mr. Bedlow, how do you process your pictures? What, what chemicals do you use? Well, it's rather complicated, but I'll be glad to show you. Excuse me. Now, when I expose a plate in my camera, I pour a little mercury into this saucer. Then I light this spirit lamp to heat the mercury. Now, when it starts to boil, the mercury vapor comes up. So I hold the exposed plate over the mercury vapor like this. Then I dip it in a basin of hyposulfite of soda, and the last thing is to wash it in water, like this. And it's finished. I see. What, uh, what happens if you run out of chemicals? Well, then I'm out of business while I send back east for more. That's why I carry plenty with me. You see, mercury is about the only one you can buy most anywhere. Mercury, huh? All right, Mr. Bedlow, thank you very much. I think the information will prove useful. Nothing's going to be useful except going after Corby. The sooner, the better. We'll go see him now. Mr. Bedlow, supposing you drive back to Fort Clark. Uh, Colonel, I want my gun. No guns, Mr. Barton. Not yet. No gun? We're dealing with killers, and he says no guns even after that picture you took of my men. Well, I hope you won't be making the same kind of a picture of us. September 29th, 1874. The Southwest Texas frontier had flared into sudden violence. Men had been killed and cattle poisoned. These lawless acts, if allowed to spread, could incite the whole territory to a deadly range war. So Mackenzie rode to the ranch of Kel Corby. At his side, an unarmed man in search of vengeance. You shouldn't say things like that, George. It's not neighborly. You call it neighborly, poisoning my stock? Why, there's not a cattle man in Texas that do a low-down trick like that. Oh, I'd say that those animals just up and died. Died of what, Mr. Corby? Well, could be most anything. I told you when you brought them here that shorthorns might do real fine back east where conditions are easier. But in Texas, hmm, no, sir. Country's too rough on them. 
Oh, they thrive here as well as any place if given half a chance. Why, can't you see that it'd mean better quality beef for the whole country and at cheaper prices? Now you're talking foolish. You spent your last dime on a losing proposition. And the sooner you face up to it, the quicker you can get out with a whole skin. You're not threatening him, are you, Mr. Corby? No. All I'm saying is the man ought to be able to skedaddle away from it while he can. That's what you want, isn't it? Drive me out and leave the grazing for you and your longhorns. This is longhorn country, George. Always has been. There's no cause to change it. Sure there is if you just open your eyes to it. Longhorns need too much grassland. They're half wild, they're tough and they're stringy. Ah, I'm tired of trying to drill some sense into you. I guess you'll have to learn it the hard way. Seeing them animals of yours just lay down and die. They didn't just lay down and die. You poisoned them. Why, you don't. Oh, you don't. Oh. All right, all right. None of that. We came here for information, not for accusations. At least not yet. Well, I admit that I don't hold with no short horns. But I didn't put no arsenic in the water. How do you know it's arsenic? Why, well, I don't. But I just figured if they was poison, that'd be it. But you won't, you won't find none of it around here. In fact, you're welcome to search the place. Oh, thank you, Mr. Corby. It does seem rather odd, though, that none of the Longhorn ranches have been hit. Only Mr. Barton's shorthorns. Not so odd, maybe. Colonel, when a man puts his wad on a loser, he might try to copper his bet. Oh, I'm not saying that that's so. But suppose his herd's insured and he hires renegades to, to poison them, and then he collects. <laughs> Fits this situation pretty well. I suppose I had my own men killed, too, huh? <laughs> well, you ain't been ranching long, or you'd know that all cow pokes is itchy footed. Yeah, you uh, army fellows have got a name for that desertion. No, not this time. There's a New York photographer in the area. He's been making a series of photographs. This is one of them. Well, I don't know anything about this. Nothing, you understand. Anybody who says I do is lying. Hmm. Well, the photographer has made other pictures. Perhaps they'll tell us more. We'll see them as soon as they're developed, when he gets some fresh mercury from Brackettville. Good day, Mr. Corby. Uh, coming, Mr. Barton? Give me three. All pink. When I hired you, I told you your job was to bust George Barton. You remember what else I said? I told you no killing. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Corby. There ain't been no killing. Don't you lie to me. I just saw a picture of two of his dead hands. Dead, you hear? Dead in that gully where you dumped them. I ought to blow you apart. Just you simmer down, Mr. Corby. All right, we shot them riders. We had to. They got the deadwood on us, poison that water hole. What'd you want us to do? Give ourselves up and tell them you hired us? Now, look, there's a fella taking pictures everywhere. He found them dead men. You don't say. I'd like to meet up with him. I ain't never seen one of them cameras. I never had my picture taken. No, well, don't be too sure about that. He may have been up in the hills taking our pictures while we were spreading that poisoned rock salt. If he had, Mackenzie'd have his whole regiment down on us right now. That's real logical. But suppose he was taking our pictures and they ain't ready yet. There's no telling what they might show. Mackenzie let it slip. The fellow's going over to Brackettville to get some mercury to develop them. If that's all you're bothered about, that's easy to fix. We'd be looking for that photographer, huh, boys? No, no more of that. No more shooting. Once you start, it's hard to stop, Mr. Corby. I ain't gonna let no photographer get my neck stretched. Now, maybe you got a better idea. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We'll kill him. <laughs> Come in. Sir, Mr. Barton, to see you. You didn't announce me. You know what that is, Colonel? Yes, I'd say it's rock salt. You know what it's for? Well, of course. 
All cattlemen put out rock salt for their herds. We put it out for our cavalry horses, too. Not that kind. It's poisoned. 30 or 40 of my steers are dead, maybe even more. It got too dark for me to look. I think Corby set this out the day before we called on him. I hope he did it in daylight. Meaning what? From what he said, I'm convinced, too, that Corby's guilty. But I haven't any proof. Now, perhaps Mr. Corby himself will give me that proof. Because he's afraid of a photograph that could only have been made in the daylight. A photograph that actually doesn't exist at all. Well, if it, if it doesn't exist, I don't know what you're driving at. If I'm right, Corby will try to destroy any evidence that might connect him with the death of those two men. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Barton, I've got work to do. Good luck. Thank you. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Sergeant, pass the word for the raiders. Immediate alert. Oh, and Sergeant, ask Mr. Bedlow to drop over here to my office. Yes, sir. We'll split up here. You better stay out of this, Mr. Corby. All right. What are you doing here? I thought I told you to stay back at the fort. If they're going to shoot up my equipment, I want to be here to take a picture of it. All right, drop it. Is it over? Let's hope so. Well, that didn't take you long. I had some help. Get back in! Get back in there! You're covered, Mr. Corby. Drop that gun. Wow. Excellent pictures, Mr. Bedlow. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Um, with one exception. Now, that one will be a big feather in my cap when I get back to New York. Well, at least I hope my sister will like it. Seriously, though, Mr. Bedlow, those pictures you took of Mr. Barton's cattle should arouse a good deal of interest. Those shorthorns are going to be tremendously important to this country someday. Especially now that he's able to raise them in peace. Come in. Yes, Sergeant? Sir, the quartermaster asked me to report our commissary shipments are two weeks overdue. As of today, the regiment goes on canned rations and hardtack. We're completely out of beef. Out of beef? Yes, sir. We have to order it from the quartermaster in Kansas City. 
Regulation, sir. Hmm. Very well, Sergeant. Sergeant. Yes, sir? I think we can forego regulations this once. Ask Mr. Barton if he can sell us a hundred head of cattle this afternoon. Um, short horns. Yes, sir. Hold it. Smile. Mackenzie's Raiders rode again and again, carrying out the secret orders of the President of the United States. Do whatever necessary to clean up the Southwest. Make it a decent place for people to live. Ride with Mackenzie's Raiders as they relive the blazing pages of history in the making.